stock market ended the year on a high note, but the luxury market, not so rosy. Joining us with Insight is Luxury Institute founder and CEO Milton Pedraza. Welcome to the show, Milton. Thank you. Uh, so as I said, not such a great year for luxury. What went wrong? Lots of factors. Um, China had been holding up the luxury market for the last few years, and when that started to slow down, all the warts came out. Hmm. So the U.S., which has had sort of tepid demand, Europe has been in bad shape. And then you add all the 2016 uh, events, such as terrorism in Europe, right. a lower uh, number of tourists in, from China all over the world and spending right. less, Brexit. So when you add up all of those factors, it really became a very tumultuous year for luxury. Well, and it's interesting because even with the election of a luxury-loving president-elect, Donald Trump, uh, there was a huge market rally, but there was really no Trump bump for luxury stocks. That's right. This is the first time that we've seen in decades where real estate is strong, the stock market is strong, right. and yet luxury, for example, traffic in the U.S. was down about 20 percent across luxury. Wow. So this is the first time where they don't um, have a correlation uh, that is normal. And do you, so you mentioned terrorism, and tourism obviously plays a big role in the luxury market. A lot of tourists come, yes. they shop in these Fifth Avenue stores, they go to other countries and buy luxury goods. What are you expecting for 2017? Will terrorism still be a, be a huge factor for tourism? It's interesting because some experts say that because ISIL has lost so much territory that a lot of the fighters are coming back to Europe and even Canada and other places, um, and that there will be some risk in the top uh, capitals of the world, and that will keep people away, or at least fearful. Yeah. Um, we think luxury overall is gonna come back, but in single digits. I think Trump has been good for luxury, no mm -hmm. question. Uh, there's a, a, an expectation that he is pro-business, right. that he'll help create jobs, investment, and therefore there will be more money for people to spend overall. But with the Donald Trump administration could come a stronger dollar. How will that impact the luxury market? Yes, and that's always an, a negative factor in the sense that uh, the cost of goods go up, the United States, people, that's tourism. Uh, in fact, we've seen tourism hold up somewhat, but what we've seen is less spending. So if you walk up and down Fifth Avenue, you'll see lots of tourists, but no bags. Huh. That's what uh, the, the insiders say. That's a good say. gauge. So yes. Let's talk about certain sectors. You say the watch market got hit particularly hard. Dramatically, and double digits down. How come? Well. A lot, as I said before, China, Hong Kong were holding up the market, and when those markets disappeared because of a crackdown on corruption by the Chinese government, the slowing Chinese economy, the, the uh, volume, the demand just plummeted, because watches used to be what they gave us gifts. Yeah. And true. so that plummeted, and, that, um, and, and also the Swiss franc uh, was revalued. That made watches far more expensive, mm -hmm. and that basically drove the volume down to the point where companies like Cartier and others have been melting down product to wow. keep it for the future. That's really good. Oh, it just hurts your head to hear that. I hate when you hear handbags are destroyed or product is melted. Uh, pivoting to 2017, you expect it to come back single digits. Are there any particular brands or sectors you expect to do well? Well, the fact that consumers, boomers, and millennials uh, have shifted to experiences bodes well for several categories. One is hospitality, that is luxury and premium lodging. Okay. Um, I would say wine, uh, spirits because those products are also very popular. In the U.S. now we have higher per, per capita consumption of wines than in, than in, in Europe. Hmm. So uh, we'll see that. Technology is a luxury that people want nowadays and they're willing to spend a much higher percentage of their income. Right. And I would say just food, uh, other uh, products that are consumable experiences, you're gonna see a lot more of that. Interesting. So you'll see that a lot of retailers are now transforming their stores, their, their points of sale into experiences to bring in, whether it's automotive, which has been slowing down now, had a couple of great years. Right. You're gonna see dealerships, you're gonna see stores, a lot more point of sale. The aesthetics are gonna improve, the merchandising and the, and the people experience because they need to bring those people in to buy product. And there's higher consumer confidence now, so maybe, Absolutely. maybe there's something to that. Milton, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you.